Recently, I covered a news segment about some pterosaurs that were discovered in the fossil bed in the Western Sahara. These are the Chemchem beds, more accurately known as the Chemchem group, which exist near the border between Morocco and Algeria. Well, today I'm going to be talking about the Chemchem group again, because there was a giant study that came out recently which explored and described the breathtaking fossil diversity preserved here, and what it tells us about African ecology 100 million years ago, during the later part of the age of the dinosaurs. To give you an appetizer for what they found, they write in their paper that these fossil beds, quote, yielded a similar fossil vertebrate assemblage of predominantly isolated elements pertaining to cartilaginous and bony fishes, turtles, crocodiliforms, pterosaurs, and dinosaurs, as well as invertebrate, plant, and trace fossils, unquote. Dr. Nizar Ibrahim is an assistant professor of biology at the University of Detroit, and he was the lead author of the study. He described the research as providing, quote, a window into Africa's age of dinosaurs, unquote. Professor David Martill is a scientist at the University of Portsmouth and co-author of the paper, and he said, quote, this is the most comprehensive piece of work on fossil vertebrates from the Sahara in almost a century since the famous German paleontologist Ernst Freiherr Stromer von Reichenbach published his last major work in 1936. Unquote. All right, so what exactly are they talking about? What kind of stuff did they find? Well, the University of Portsmouth posted an article about the findings. Here's a passage from that article, describing some of the fossil biodiversity described in their paper. They say, quote, about 100 million years ago, the area was home to a vast river system, filled with many different species of aquatic and terrestrial animals. Fossils from the Chemchem group include three of the largest predatory dinosaurs ever known, including the saber-toothed Carcharodontosaurus, over 8 meters in length with enormous jaws and long serrated teeth up to 8 inches long, and Deltadromius around 8 meters in length, and a member of the raptor family with long, unusually slender hind limbs for its size, as well as several predatory flying reptiles, like pterosaurs, and crocodile-like hunters." Unquote. In their paper's abstract, they also mention that the vertebrate fauna is, quote, "...biased towards large-bodied carnivores, including at least four large-bodied non-avian theropods, Annabellosaurid, Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Deltadromius, several large-bodied pterosaurs, and several large crocodiliforms, unquote. They also add that there are no modern ecosystems with predators that show a comparable bias towards growing to such massive sizes. Dr. Martill also described the biodiversity of the region, saying, quote, This place was filled with absolutely enormous fish including giant coelacanths and lungfish. The coelacanth, for example, is probably four or even five times as large than today's coelacanth. There is an enormous freshwater saw shark called Onchopristus, with the most fearsome of rostral teeth. They're like barbed daggers, but beautifully shiny. Unquote. Dr. Ibrahim said that this was, quote, arguably the most dangerous place in the history of planet Earth a place where a human time traveler would not last very long, unquote. All right, so this is awesome. This is the kind of stuff that gets every six-year-old boy hooked on dinosaurs. Not only was the world a completely different place back then, with thick, steamy jungles and a hot, dense atmosphere, there were literal monsters roaming the landscape, each doing their part to viciously, bloodily, and violently sustain this frightening, cretaceous African ecology.